Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Mystic Minute is about AI and chat GPT. So I read somebody uh, commented that uh, chat GPT was, should really be called plagiarism GPT because what it does is it searches the internet and pulls information collectively. So I was going to write a blog post about this last week. And the first thing I did whimsically was ask for haiku. And it wrote three pretty good haiku on AI and chat GPT. And then um, I asked it to write a poem. And man, it wrote like a five verse poem in like a minute and a half. And then I asked it to write a blog post. And um, it wrote a much better blog post than I would have written. It had a whole outline. And when you read it, all the words were um, resonated. You know, the sentences resonated. Uh, but it sort of reminded me of something a very brilliant uh, middle schooler or high schooler would have written who had an outline. But didn't really grasp the depth of the topic. So I've sat with this for a week and decided to do a video on it because I was having a real hard time competing with a blog post that the chat GPT wrote. So here's the thing. The thing that was missing from chat GPT was consciousness. Now it had the resonance of consciousness, consciousness because it did draw from lots of people's writings and thoughts. But in terms of what it was really saying, it, it missed consciousness. What it reminded me of was when you wake up in the middle of the night and you have your mind chatter going, your, your monkey mind, your inner gremlin, your uh, automatic negative thoughts, ants. And uh, it, it sounds like you. It's very engaging. And you can spend most of the wee hours of the morning uh, reacting to it or arm wrestling with, with it. Um, many a time it's just gone me up. And the only thing to shut it up is to either go on Twitter and overwhelm it with the news, which just feeds it some more and gives me some very strange dreams, or play solitaire. And I have a form of solitaire that is a little bit complex, so it's very, um, it, you know, it, it occupies the mind. But it's not consciousness. It is the cluster of cells in the left side of my brain, in your brain as well. You've got a cluster of cells in the left side of your brain that is responsible for organizing things. It reminds you that uh, you've got to pick up milk on the way back from work. It uh, can also weave together two unrelated facts and weave a whole story. So it's your storyteller. And it's very convincing. It also embodies the, the programming from your childhood. Don't cross the road without holding your mother's hand. Don't cross the road without holding your mother's hand. Well, you know, my mother died in 2013. I was 53. So standing on the street corner, I'm not going to progress across the road if I still listen to my inner chat GPT. And what happens when we expand as consciousness, when we embody more into form and we start to step, expand our boundaries, the chat GPT goes bananas. It, all the warnings go off because all those old rules that were very important to keep you safe when, you know, when you were in pampers 
are restricting you now. So it's just amazing how um, engaging it is. And what it also reminds me of is the lack of consciousness that we operate off of. You know, we go throughout our lives and we're controlled by this cluster of cells that is also continuously fed by the things that are in the news that are dramatic, um, uh, misinformation. Um, it, it really feeds off of lies and then it spews out misinformation. And how I find that I'm not operating off the chat GPT is when it is simple, it is clear, clarity is an aspect of consciousness, when it feels like me. But it's really hard to get to that point of clarity when You've got your faux news in your head. And if, if we're progressing with ChatGPT writing, you know, our, our newspaper articles or news articles, uh, if we're progressing with ChatGPT, you know, writing our TV and movie scripts, we're not going to be going very far. We're going to be spinning our wheels. We're going to be doing the same old, same old. And I don't believe that ultimately is going to happen because evolution doesn't go backwards. In some way, we're always moving forward. And especially now when the collective consciousness is so strong so, so, so many of us are waking up, have already awakened. The, you know, the younger ones of us have already popped out wide awake, <laughs> waking us up, operating with that clarity, not tolerating the intolerable. And those that are yelling the loudest are the ones that are run most by their own inner chat GPT that want to drag us back to a mythological past where things seemed safe, but we're very unsafe. All of us that doing our inner trauma work know how unsafe that past was. That was run more by illusion than even now. So I invite you to take that in. I invite you to find your own inner voice, to recognize when you've got your chat GPT going off in the middle of the night and don't engage with it. That just feeds it energy. It feeds off of energy, but it makes it talk more. So find a way of redirecting, redirecting your thoughts towards what's true. It creates space for clarity, for consciousness. Bring in consciousness. You can just imagine when you, when you wake up and that voice is going off, just imagine consciousness filling that space and see what happens. And if you want to know more, my website is joan-nukem.com. I have more YouTubes on my YouTube channel, so if you like these, like them and share them. If you want to get them in your inbox, you can sign up below. Uh, I have a blog that I will be writing more in once I get over my ChatGPT outline envy. 
and I'm starting to do sessions again. So if you want to know more about that, go to my website, joan-newcomb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.